Hi, I'm Susie Rhodes with Pass Masters. Welcome to this week's questions of the week. This week, our topic is regulation of investment advisor representatives. You can expect this topic to appear on the Series 63, Series 65, and Series 66 exams. We will be taking a 10-question topic quiz from within one of our Past Masters Securities courses. Let's check out our learning management system. Under the Uniform Securities Act, that's state securities law, which of the following is not considered an investment advisor representative? So just as a little introduction here, the IAR is you, meaning the person that's taking the Series 65 or Series 66, the individual, the living, breathing human. This topic still appears on the Series 63, even though the Series 63 is an agent exam. They still like IAR questions on the agent exam. So who is not an IAR? An investment advisor is never an IAR. The IA is the firm level. So that can be a really hard thing to wrap your head around. It's easy, the topic of broker, dealer versus agent or registered representative, that is obviously you, but the IARIA just gets a little bit harder sometimes for students. So let me show you. <laughs> it's easier if I draw. So when we talk about the firm level, we're either talking about an investment advisor who fills out what's called Form ADV to register, or we're talking about a broker dealer who fills out Form BD to register. And then the individuals who work for these firms are on this one side, agents, also called registered representatives, or investment advisor representatives. These have their series 65 or series 66. So this topic quiz is all about investment advisor representatives. On your actual exams, all of these questions are all mixed together. So 63 is just law questions, where 65 and 66 you have product and law, which makes those tests really hard. Not the 63 is easy. Wor wordy law questions, worry law questions. That's what you should expect. It's mental gymnastics, but you can do it. So it's entirely possible that you can wear two hats. You can have the hat of the IAR and the hat of an agent where you get a fee for investment advice with the IAR hat and you get a commission with the agent or registered representative hat. You don't have to, but you can. So you can take a Series 65 without any sort of product license at all. And, and when that is you, that's it makes it a little bit harder of an exam just because you really have to learn everything about the securities industry. But that's what I do in the courses that I teach. I teach you what you need to know to pass the test. So let's go back to this question. So the IA is never the IAR, but let's check the other choices. These other three should be considered investment advisor representatives. An individual that is employed by or associated with an investment advisor that determines which recommendations or advice regarding securities should be given would be considered an IAR. An individual that is employed by or associated with an investment advisor that solicits, offers, or negotiates for the sale of or sells investment advisory services would also be an IAR. An individual that is employed by or associated with an investment advisor that supervises persons involved in the giving of investment advice would also be considered an IAR. So the firm is never the IAR. So you click what you believe is the correct answer. You click check answer. It gives you the green check mark if you're correct. If you want to reinforce your knowledge, you click show explanation. It gives you the written out explanation and click the play button. Under the Uniform Securities Act. Ah! Which? It's me. So there's audio explanations for all of the questions within our courses to appeal to all of the different learning styles that are out there. 
Which of the following would require an investment advisor representative to register in this state? So I call these STEM questions or multiple, multiple questions where you have one, two, three, four, and then A, B, C, D. It's a tricky way of making four questions into one question basically, but if you slow down, they're not as bad as you expect them to be. So we're looking for when does an IAR have to register in this state? If they have a place of business in this state, they better be registered in this state. So that means I can get rid of the answer choice of D because it did not include number one. This is how I want you to do these questions. Two, meeting with clients at a coffee shop in this state to discuss advisory services would require that the IAR be registered. So one is true and two is true, so I can get rid of A. Three, meeting with prospective clients in an office space Yes, you would be required to be registered here. Having three clients who live in this state. There is a de minimis rule. There's a little bit of business that you can do in a state without having to register in the state. It applies to IARs and IAs, and it is five or fewer public clients. So if you only had three clients in a state, you would not be required to register there. So the correct answer includes Roman numerals, one, two, and three, but not four. So we'll check our answer. Yes. Regarding leaving a firm, all of the following are true regarding post-registration requirements for an investment advisor representative, except so we're looking for which statement is false. Which statement is false? Form U5 is used to resign an individual's registration. That is true. It is Form U4 that is used to apply an individual's registration. If the investment advisor representative worked for a state registered advisor, it is the advisor's responsibility to notify the administrator. That is true. If the investment advisor representative worked for a federally covered advisor, it is the individual's responsibility to notify the administrator. That is true. Both the firm and the individual must notify the administrator. That is false. So let me show you how this works just to kind of make sure we did this right. So when we're looking here at the investment advisor and IAR, so the IAR is the individual. The individual can only register at the state level. That's true for an agent registered representative and for an IAR at the state level. It is the IA that is either going to be registered federally with the SEC or at the state level. The most common way we decide on where they're gonna register is the size of assets of the firm under management. 100 million or more, they register federally. Under 100 million, they register at the state level. There's a little bit more to it than that, but that's just in a basic nutshell. So if you work for a firm that is registered at the state level and you leave the firm, then it is the firm's responsibility to notify the administrator that you're no longer with the firm. But if you don't work for a state registered investment advisor, instead you work for one that's registered with the SEC, then it becomes your responsibility because you're the one registered at the state level to notify the administrator. So if you work at a firm that's state registered, then it's the firm's responsibility. If you work at a federally registered firm, then it's your responsibility to notify the administrator. That's form U5. Lori is registered as an investment advisor representative at a small local firm. The firm is registered at the state level. Lori has decided to take some time off and homeschool her girls for this coming school year. All of the following are, are false regarding her registration, except. So for this question, we're looking for which one is true. 
Her firm is responsible for notifying the administrator of Lori's withdrawal, Form U5. That's true because she works for a state registered firm. That's true. But let's check all the other choices. Both Lori and her firm are responsible for notifying the administrator. That's false. Lori is responsible for no, no false. It will be put on hold. No. <laughs> Securities registrations can never be put on hold. You actually must withdraw from the industry. And then you have a period of time of two years if you reapply for registration where you do not have to retest. After two years, you're back taking another class and taking the exam again. It's just an important period of time to be aware of. So let's see, we're looking for the true statement. The true statement was the only one that was true, that her firm is responsible for notifying the administrator. Which of the following is not a requirement to register as an investment advisor representative? Choices include net capital, pass the appropriate exam, file a consent to service a process, pay fees to the state. So do you have to pay fees? Absolutely. Consent to service a process is done to create jurisdiction across state lines. Individuals do have to file that. You can have a client in another state. If they're in another state and they're mad at you, they'll uh, issue a subpoena on you through that state securities administrator, pass the appropriate exam, yes. Net capital requirements, assets minus liabilities, is the firm's net capital. Net capital requirements only apply to firms. So broker dealers and investment advisors have net capital requirements, but not agents or investment advisor representatives. Solicitors are exempt from registration must be a minimum of 21 years of age, must register as, an invest, as investment advisor representatives, yes, must register as agents, no. So you have to be 18 to take a securities exam. Solicitors must register as investment advisor representatives. Federally, covered advisors need not register in any state. The firm's investment advisor representatives are required to register at the state level. Yes. Required to register at both the SEC. No. Exempt from state. No. <laughs> Remember, I already showed you that. The individual registration, whether or not it's IAR or agent, state registration. Under the Investment Advisors Act of 1940, federal law, an investment advisor representative is any of the firm supervised persons that meets all of the following re requirements, except. So what is not a requirement for a supervised person? Of the individual's clients, more than 10% are natural persons and not high net worth individuals. The individual regularly solicits, meets with, or otherwise communicates with the firm's clients. The individual has more than five clients who are natural persons and not high net worth individuals. Or the individual provides impersonal advisory services only. The correct answer here is the individual provides impersonal advisory services only that person would not be considered an investment advisor representative under federal law. An investment advisor representative registers, choices include at the state level, at the federal level with FINRA or with the SEC, you know this, where do individuals register? At the state level. That is the only place individuals can register. Notice I didn't say person. Person is broadly defined and includes the term firm. So individuals, state. Brian has filed his application for registration as an investment advisor representative. While awaiting his registration, which the following can he do at the investment advisor? Review clients' information and formulate specific investment advice. Solicit new clients, assist with research, or meet with current clients. 
So he cannot act in the capacity of an IAR until he's been granted registration by the state securities administrator. So the only one of those that Brian could do while he is awaiting his registration would be to assist with research. That concludes this week's questions of the week. Topic being regulation of investment advisor representatives. Be sure to give this video a thumbs up, subscribe to our channel, and turn those notifications on. If you'd like to check out Past Master Securities course offerings or to enroll in any of our programs, there is a link found in this video's description. Slow down when you get to these law questions. You've got it. I hope to have you as a student soon. Happy studies. You got this.